I welcome you all uh, in this lecture uh, on basic system models, mechanical system, uh, which is a uh, sub module for the course on modeling and simulation of dynamic system. Uh, so, uh, last uh, five lectures we have seen how can we model uh, the systems which are there in the multi energy domains using bond graph. Uh, in next few lectures, I uh, will be discussing modeling of uh, similar type of systems using uh, 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 another method what we call it as the uh, say uh, 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 using uh, the free body diagram. Okay. Uh, so, uh, essentially uh, here uh, uh, what we will be doing is that uh, initially we will be defining some uh, essential uh, building blocks uh, in order to model these type of systems and those building blocks could be used uh, to model a real physical systems. Okay. So, uh, in uh, say next uh, few lectures, uh, we will be discussing about say mechanical systems, electrical systems, hydraulic, pneumatic okay, uh, and thermal systems. Fine. So, uh, uh, this is what I uh, intend to uh, do in these uh, lectures. So, uh, we have talked a lot about mathematical modeling. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, to have a uh, uh, just uh, quick review of uh, uh, it, uh, why a mathematical modeling is needed? Fine. So, if you can think of starting a motor motor will not get the desired speed immediately. Okay. It takes certain time to in order to get the desired speed. So, we may be interested in knowing that how with time, how this speed varies and then finally, um, it goes to the desired speed. Likewise, suppose I want to fill a water tank, water will not be filled immediately fine. Uh, so, uh, there will be uh, uh, gradual increase in the height or change in the height of the water level with time okay? and ultimately the water will be getting filled up. So, uh, if you want to know that what rate this height is uh, uh, changing or what rate uh, water is being filled up, then uh, uh, it will uh, help us in, uh, uh, okay, uh, in uh, knowing uh, the uh, behavior of the system. Now, as I said, uh, to understand the behavior of systems, mathematical models are needed. Okay, and these mathematical models are nothing but equations which describe the relationship between the input and output. So, what is uh, input to the system and what is output from the system? Uh, these mathematical expressions basically gives you the relationship between the input and output. Okay, and uh, as I said, uh, as we have seen in the case of uh, bond graph modeling, there what we did that we uh, identified uh, the system components okay what all system uh, components it is made of say inertial elements uh, uh, damping uh, uh, element and uh, say uh, uh, compliance element like that here also what we will be doing is that we will be defining the building blocks okay and those building blocks one building block will be uh, exhibiting or taking care of only single property and these building blocks combinations then can be used to model the actual physical system we will be taking up certain examples also. Now, as I said each building block can be assumed to have a single property or a function. So, one building block it could be either compliant one or it could be either damper one or it could be uh, either inertial one. So, each building block can be assumed to have a single property of function and by combining building blocks in different ways a variety of systems can be built up. Okay. So, this is how we are going to proceed and a system built up in this way what is uh, called as known as uh, the lumped parameter system. Now, 
mechanical system building blocks. My uh, aim for this lecture uh, is to discuss about the various mechanical system building blocks and how by combining these blocks we can build a model of the mechanical system. In the next lecture we will be taking up the electrical systems. Now coming back to the mechanical system, the models which represent mechanical systems have a spring damper and masses as the basic building blocks. Okay? Uh, uh, so, uh, fine. Now, what does uh, the role of spring here is the spring they represent the stiffness present in the system. Okay? So, uh, if you take the example the very first example which I gave you in during our lecture class of uh, uh, the first lecture uh, in this course uh, I took an example of the water tank. Okay? So, there the pillar of the tanks basically play the role of the spring. So, that way uh, spring uh, they represent the stiffness of a system. Then damper they represent the forces opposing the motion. So, in your system if you have certain force uh, which opposes the motion then that force you can model with the help of a damper. Similarly, the masses they represent the inertia or resistance to acceleration um, uh, that is in your physical system if there is uh, uh, some element which exhibit a behavior like this that resistance to acceleration uh, then that element can be modeled as a uh, mass. Now, any mechanical system does not to be made of uh, spring damper and masses. Okay? Uh, it could be as I said uh, um, combinations okay? or even the individual elements could also be there. But it should have the properties of stiffness, damping and inertia. Okay? So, uh, uh, here uh, as I said when we are talking about a physical system it is not uh, required that that physical system is actually made of those type of systems uh, okay? uh, that is actually made of a spring or damper or uh, mass. Okay? Rather as I said they should exhibit the property of the spring damper and the masses okay? and uh, I gave you the example of a water tank. The building blocks having stiffness, damping and inertia can be considered to have the force as input and displacement as the output. So, this we will be seeing up. Let us take begin with the first basic element that is a spring. Now, you see that uh, uh, suppose uh, we have a, uh, a schematic here being represented a spring is being represented and a force say F is applied on this spring and because of this force there is a change in the length fine. And here uh, uh, in the block diagram mode I, I can uh, just represent it like this that say there is a input F here to the spring and uh, because of this input there is a certain output X or the, there is a change in length X of the spring. Now, these spring have got a property what we call it as the stiffness okay? and this is defined by the relationship between the force F that can uh, extend or compress a spring and the resulting extension or compression X. Okay? So, this is how uh, stiffness of the spring can be explained and this is how mathematically it is defined. Okay? That is F is equal to Kx where K is the constant or what we call it as the stiffness. What does this mean basically is that higher the value of K okay you will be requiring more force for the same deformation okay so uh, if uh, uh, you want the same deformation but your stiffness uh, is increasing then uh, na naturally uh, you will be requiring more and more force uh, in order to get the same deformation okay yeah next building block is the damper this building block represents the type of forces that are felt when one tries to push an object through fluid or move against the frictional 
forces okay here you can see uh, the is uh, schematic of it say uh, it's a basically a cylinder piston arrangement where a force f is being applied on here this side is a liquid and this liquid offer resistance for the motion of the uh, piston Okay. So, uh, 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 this type of situation or say uh, action against the frictional forces, this can be modeled using damper. Now, here you see faster the object is pushed, greater is going to be the resisting force. So, the resisting force here depends on the rate at which the object is being pushed or depends on the velocity. The damper which is used to represent damping force consists of a piston moving in a closed cylinder. So, uh, here if we represent it by uh, say block diagram you can see for a input force output here uh, say output is x uh, and this relationship between force and x is in terms of the derivative that force is uh, equal to damping coefficient into the velocity. Now, when the piston is moved, the fluid on other side tries to flow th through or pass the friction and this flow produces the resistive force which I have just explained to you. And ideally this damping force is proportional to the velocity uh, here as I explained in my previous slide f is equal to Cv and where V uh, C is the constant. Okay. And since velocity is the rate of change of displacement x we can write f as c dx by dt. Okay? So, thus the relationship between output and the input depends on the rate of change of output. Okay? So, uh, this is what as I said uh, the uh, input is equal to uh, constant into rate of change of output that is the uh, rate of change of displacement position. Next building block is mass. Okay? Uh, so, uh, again this building block shows the property that bigger is the mass greater will be the force required to uh, give a specific acceleration. Okay. Now, this relationship between the force and acceleration comes from the Newton's second law which we all are aware of f is equal to m a and here m is the uh, proportionality constant or uh, the mass. Now, uh, let us see here in this uh, say uh, schematic uh, you have a mass a force f is applied and this force causes an acceleration of course, uh, there is a change in displacement here. Now, the input here is f and the output at x, but here this f is uh, related by the second derivative of the output that is mass in and uh, into acceleration. Now, coming to the energy power, uh, energy is required to stretch a spring, accelerate a mass and move the piston inside the damper. Now, you see in case of spring and mass, energy is stored whereas, in case of damper, the energy is dissipated. We have discussed a lot about all this in uh, my uh, lecture on the bond graphs. Now, when the spring is stressed, it stores energy and when it is released, uh, okay, it releases the energy. Now, fine and of course, when uh, the energy is released, the spring comes back to its original position, gets uh, uh, its original length. Now, energy is stored in a spring for a given extension x is given by E is equal to half k x square or if I substitute for x here that is uh, f by k it is half f square by k. So, this is the energy which is uh, being going to be stored uh, in the spring. Uh, you can recall that it was based on the conservation of the power that we have drawn the bond graph. So, uh, 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 try to correlate what we studied in the bond graph modeling and what we are studying uh, here using the block diagram approach. Now, uh, which essentially will be using the free body diagram. Now, 
energy is stored in the mass when it is moving with a velocity v and this type of energy what we call it as the kinetic energy and its expression all of us know that it is a half mv square where is ma uh, m is the mass and v is the velocity. Okay. So, uh, the energy is released uh, uh, when this mass is stopped. So, whenever this mass is stopped that energy is released. Now, for case of damper as I said the energy is dissipated fine, it does not return to its original position when the input force F is retracted. Okay. So, say in a cylinder piston arrangement which is acting behaving as a damper, okay, when you retract the force, when you draw back the force, the piston is not going to come back to the its original position because here the power has been dissipated and this dissipated power is equal to force into velocity or if I substitute for force it is C V square. Now, so, these were uh, building blocks for the translational system. Translational system means the system which has got translatory motion okay, or many times we call it as which has got the linear motions also. Okay. So, here essentially what we did, we uh, made the building blocks uh, uh, relating the applied force which is input and the displacement x which is output. Now, uh, the, there is a uh, similar counterpart in the rotational system. For example, for the mass in the translatory system, we have the moment of inertia in the rotary system or for stiffness uh, spring in the translatory system, we have the torsional spring in the rotary system. Likewise, for the damper in the translatory system, we have the um, uh, rotational damper in the rotary system. So, there is one to one analogy between the translatory and rotary system, okay. but uh, uh, let us see uh, uh, how these are. Now, as I said in case of rotational system, the three basic building blocks are the torsional spring, a rotary damper and the moment of inertia. So, with the help of these three basic building blocks, we can make the model for any real physical system. Now, these building blocks are uh, subjected to input torque and the output or the angle rotated. Okay. Now, for a torsional spring as we know the angle rotated is proportional to the torque applied. Okay. So, we have the relationship tau is equal to k theta where k is the torsional stiffness of the spring. Okay. Uh, so, this is just similar to what we have seen f is equal to k into x for the uh, 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 normal spring. Now, for the a rotary damper or a disc is rotated in a fluid and the resistive torque is proportional to the angular velocity. Okay. So, in this case tau is proportional to omega or we can remove that proportionality constant by putting c here and uh, here then we can write omega as d theta by dt. So, here basically you have the relationship between the input torque and the output uh, rotation. Okay. But this relationship is related with uh, the first derivative of the rotation. Likewise, the moment of inertia building block shows the property that greater the moment of inertia, more the torque is required to produce the required acceleration. Okay. So, if I am going to compare the two systems okay, uh, uh, with one has uh, say uh, lesser uh, moment of inertia and one has more moment of inertia. So, naturally for a given acceleration if moment of inertia increases naturally your torque requirement is going to increase okay and here then i can write alpha as d omega by dt or uh, i can write in terms of the displacement here uh, so angular displacement so it is i d square theta upon dt square 
then uh, coming to the energy uh, uh, power in case of rotary system, in case of rotary system torsional spring and rotating mass stores energy whereas rotary damper dissipates energy the behavior is same. The energy stored by torsional spring when it is twisted by say an angle theta is given by half k theta is square or I can substitute for theta here I can get I half tau is square by k. Similarly, the energy is stored by a mass of moment of inertia I when rotating with angular velocity omega is given by half I omega square and this we call it as the kinetic energy for the rotary system or for the rotary motion. And the power dissipated by the rotary damper when it is rotating with angular velocity omega is given by tau omega or this is uh, if I substitute for tau, so this is C omega square. So, this is about the uh, uh, rotary system, the three building block for the rotary system. Now, let us see an example building up a mechanical system fine. So, suppose I have this as the mechanical system a spring mass damper system we have a spring we have a mass and we have a damper system. Now, this spring mass damper system is subjected to a force F as the input and the output is say the displacement X. Okay. So, here uh, uh, in the block diagram I can represent a spring mass damper system input force and output X. Now, as I was telling you what we do is essentially that we draw first the uh, uh, first we draw the uh, free body diagram of this. Okay. So, we have a mass here uh, the force F is acting in this direction and when uh, this uh, is subjected to uh, displacement basically see here we have a mass say uh, I apply a force F and let us see this is my the coordinate direction X. Now, when the force F is applied okay, uh, the spring will be uh, we can represent in this free body diagram the spring force and this will be acting in this direction as K X and similarly the force due to damper this will be C X dot. Okay. So, this is how the free body diagram can be drawn. Okay. The free body diagram is th that we isolate the body and represent all the forces acting on that body. Okay. So, this is there. Now, to write the system e equation mathematical equation for this what is done is that in your coordinate direction you have to find out the forces the resultant forces and those resultant forces are responsible for the acceleration of the mass. Okay. So, these resultant forces here are F minus K x minus C x dot and this is going to be equal to the M x double dot okay. or from here I can write this as M x double dot plus C x dot plus K x is equal to f. Okay. So, this is the system equation for this system. Here it is represented like this m d square x by d t square plus c d x by d t plus k x is equal to f. And here you see that this is relationship between the input force f and the output displacement x and this is a second order differential equation. Uh, we can take examples of many physical systems okay, uh, uh, to model using this type of building blocks. Okay. Say uh, one example could be uh, the machine mounted on the ground. So, you have a mass there are ground excitation, ground forces coming from here and uh, 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 here there is a output displacement. Okay. So, we can model this system uh, as using the same building blocks or I can say uh, model a car. We have seen uh, a lot on the modeling of the car in using the bound graph modeling. Okay. So, here say you have a uh, uh, mass of the car is there, there is a suspension system here represented by spring and damper, then mass of the suspension is there and say there is a tire here and there is a ground excitation. So, again this system 
can be modeled using a spring and damper and the mass. Uh, uh, another example uh, just uh, what we have seen there, uh, we can uh, take this example of uh, spring mass, uh, spring and mass system. So, there are two springs which are in uh, uh, here uh, which are in parallel and here uh, for this system also we can write the system equation simply. Okay. Uh, so, what we do is uh, uh, here is the force and this is by say coordinate direction x. Okay. So, the spring forces will be here uh, say k 1 x and k 2 x. Okay. So, first what I do I write the all the forces in this direction. So, here f minus k 1 x minus k 2 x and I equate this to m x double dot. Okay. So, uh, this is what the equation is going to be. So, m x double dot is going to be equal to f minus k 1 x minus k 2 x. We can take a little complicated system like this here, okay. the 2 degree of freedom system. Now, in this 2 degree of freedom system, you can see that there are the 2 masses which are connected by a spring of a stiffness say k 1, k 2 and k 3. So, here what we do? We take a coordinate uh, direction here say positive direction x 1 like this and x 2 like this. Then we draw the free body diagram of both the masses. Now, for say first mass uh, when uh, uh, it is given a small displacement in x 1 direction, the forces by this spring is going to be k 2 x 1 minus x 2 here and the forces by this spring on this mass is going to be k 1 and x 1 in this direction. Now, what we do? We find out for that case the unbalanced forces. Okay, uh, 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 the, uh, those forces will be uh, here for this case uh, it is k 2 uh, x 1 minus x 2 and this one is k 1 x 1 and this is my x 1 sense positive sense of x 1. So, the forces in this direction is minus k 1 x 1 minus k 2 x 1 minus x 2. I am using minus sign because their direction is opposite to that of this one and this is going to be equal to your m 1 x 1 double dot. Okay. So, you can see what equations you get here. All right. Likewise, I can write for the second mass here m 2. So, other end of the spring here is fixed. So, it will be having 0 velocity. So, if this is my x 2 direction, then the force by this spring is going to be k 3 x 2 and the force by uh, other spring is going to be uh, here k 2 x 2 minus x 1. Okay. So, this is going to be and then I can write the forces in this direction minus k 3 x 2 minus k 2 x 2 minus x 1 and this I can equate to m 2 x 2 double dot. Okay. And when I simplify this, I get this equation. Okay. So, this way again uh, uh, I can draw the equation. Here we can include the dampers also okay. and uh, we can represent the damping forces and accordingly these equations could be modified. The last example I am going to take it is a rotating uh, a mass at the end of a shaft. Suppose there is a shaft here and this shaft I uh, uh, at the shaft uh, th at the end of it there is a mass here and I want to represent uh, or mathematically model this system. So, say there is a torque uh, applied in this direction this is my uh, uh, positive sense for the measuring of the theta. Then what we do basically is that this shaft behavior we can represent by a torsional spring and a rotary damper. Okay. And of course, I have got this mass with uh, uh, moment of inertia i. Then in order to write the expression for uh, this system here, what we do is that uh, uh, that is uh, say I have this system and I have a 
torsional spring and there is a say torsional damper fine. Uh, this is my uh, remember positive theta and I am applying a torque here. Now, this is torsional spring is going to apply a resistive torque of magnitude say k theta and uh, the torsional damper is going to apply a torque of magnitude c theta dot. Okay. So, uh, what are my unbalanced here uh, unbalanced torques that is T minus k theta minus c theta dot and this I can equate as i theta double dot. Okay. So, basically what we have here uh, that is the t, uh, t minus t minus c d theta by d t minus k theta is equal to i theta double dot or this is i d square theta by d t square plus c d theta by d t plus k theta is equal to tau torque. Okay. So, this way uh, we can model uh, this rotary mass at the end of a shaft. Okay. So, uh, with this I close uh, this lecture on modeling of mechanical system. In the next uh, sub module we will be looking at the modeling of electrical systems. Thank you.